Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to touch on how to paint, or how I paint, my British infantry for World War II games. So bolt action in particular, but this works for just about anything. As you can see here, I've got one of the guys, he's from Artisan Designs, this figure. And he's actually really cool. I love the, the level of detail on these fellas. They've got good proportions. And if you're playing with uh, Warlord Plastics as well, these fit in really well, sort of detail and scale-wise. So recommend these guys as well as Black Tree Miniatures. They also do some pretty cool English as well. Now today, I just want to touch on a couple of differences in color before I get into how I'll paint them. And that comes down mainly to manufacturing differences. I've got here both Flat Earth and English Uniform. Now between the two of them, I am painting an English Trooper, but I'm going to use Flat Earth because the uniforms themselves, this color English Uniform, has a slightly green tinge to it. Now this tended to make them look a little bit more like the Canadians, who had slightly more green in their color mix. So if you're painting Canadian troops, you know, if you're doing a Commonwealth-based army, you want to paint the guys from, uh, what do you say, America's hat? <laughs> is that it? English Uniform is what I would use for that. And just to briefly touch on that, I would then highlight with Talon Sand, okay? I have not come across anything in any other range which is better for highlighting this English uniform than Talon Sand. So, brief touch on that. I'm going to use Flat Earth, though, for his uniform, because I want him to have that slightly more drab, English-looking uniform color. I'll then highlight that, funnily enough, with US Field Drab, once he's had a wash. All his black details, so his boots, his little Sten gun here, and his bayonet case, they'll all be black. You can use any old black you fancy for that. Uh, any wooden details would be flat brown. If you're doing guys who've got normal rifles, you know, this would be what you'd use for that. Now his helmet is going to be that deep green color, and so will be his uh, canteen. I've looked up a few places that argue fairly vociferously on the subject of the canteen, but I'm going to paint it green. I Most places I've seen agree on it being green. So we're going to paint them both the same way with camo olive green and then Russian uniform to highlight. This is quite a nice green. It's got a little bit of a gray tinge. Now, the last step to a British soldier, his webbing. There is some kind of argument over this. Hoo boy, Blanco. Now what Blanco was, now to touch briefly on how British webbing was made, it was canvas. And canvas over time, especially in the humid jungle environments, would rot and fall to pieces, and that's not what you want. So from time immemorial, we're talking back, I mean this is a couple of hundred years old, this product I believe, is called Blanco. And what Blanco is, is a, a canvas treatment which is designed to make it waterproof, keep it clean, and last longer. And of course, the British infantry, you know, officers being the type they were back in the day, that also meant a wonderful excuse to have everybody looking smart and uniform and wasting time and money on keeping their kit clean. So Blanco, you know, it came in a, a thin sort of brick, which you would dab a little bit of water to, foam up a paste, and knead that into your webbing. And the problem that you have over World War II is that it was pretty much the only thing that changed color. Um, other armies like the Americans would go from brown to a lot of green material. The German army, you know, if you're looking at the right photograph, you can pinpoint a guy almost down to the month that he's serving, <laughs> depending on the variety of uniform pieces that he's got cobbled together. Whereas the British, you know, they wore pretty much the same thing throughout the war. The only exceptions were the commandos and the parachute regiments who'd have a different jacket over the top, the old famous Denison smocks, for example. But webbing, webbing changed color because at some point in 1943, Blanco came out with a new range of different things. And they were khaki, they were dark green, and this was a change from that sort of pale beige or buff that we'd seen previously. We're going to try and emulate number 97 medium green Blanco, <laughs> which for that we're going to use green gray. Okay, this is a, a fairly green tone and green gray works pretty well for that. Otherwise, if you wanted to do earlier or uh, different sort of tones, 
Khaki works very well, uh, Vallejo's Khaki, or Rakath Flesh works well. Now, Blanco and webbing would fade over time, especially if it was seeing a lot of action in the sun, and it bleached to a much lighter color. So even if you are doing these later greener colors, you can go quite light with them. But I like doing the later war look in uh, green stuff because it gives you a little bit more contrast to the miniature. The British uniform was otherwise fairly boring, which <laughs> it makes it easy to paint, but you know, we're going to go for a little bit there just to brighten them up some. So to start off, we'll go for his webbing straight away, and we'll start with some green gray. So this is a nice easy step. You see I've got quite a bit on my brush there, probably way more than I should do, and it's just a case of going around everywhere that this webbing is and dabbing in that green. Now, this doesn't take too long, and as well we've seen that uh, green gray from Vallejo, it darkens down as it dries. This is going to have a wash over the top, but for what we've got going on at the moment, it's actually going to look fairly cracking, and we can highlight it with green gray later on too. So just go around, grab all of his equipment, all of his canvas gear, and give it a quick coat of this. Once all his webbing's done, just a couple of quick coats of, I'm going to use Cadian Flesh Tone for his face here, and his hands as well, of course. Now this isn't a base paint, so this will need a couple of coats just to give me a solid color. And if I'm going to go over the straps or anything, it doesn't really matter. So with his face and hands done, let's quickly skip ahead. We'll do his helmet and his, what do you call it? Canteen or water bottle, sorry, he would say. So just quickly bashing around the sides here of his helmet. This is not too difficult. Now with a couple of thin coats over his helmet to make sure that's a solid color, I've done his uh, gaiters in khaki, just that flat khaki. And I'm gonna do the same for the strap around his head. And from here, the last details will be anything that's black. So I'm gonna paint his sten in like this. Now, if you were doing his rifle, you would have done it brown first and now be filling in any of the metal details with this flat black. And then I'm going to do his boots in the same because they're black. <laughs> it's not complicated. Now, the last couple of details have been finished off. You can see there's not really a huge amount to do with these English uniforms. They aren't particularly thrilling. You know, <laughs> this comes down to sort of unit markings and basing when you get to that. So... He's ready now for his wash, and if you've known me for any stretch of time, that means it's time to bust out the Agrax Earthshade. Now, if I was going to do this guy for my own army, I would break out the army painted dip, and I'd give him a strong tone quick shade. Let him dry overnight, then give him a couple of uh, matte varnishes. But just for the sake of uh, showing off how these colors all come together, Agrax, there, Agrax Earthshade does the job. Now that that wash has had plenty of time to dry, you can see how it shaded all the uniform for me. It's also darkened down the uh, webbing quite a bit and given it a nice neutral green-gray sort of feel to it. Quite like how that's come out. So what we're going to do now is highlight his uniform. And we're going to go for fairly blocky highlights with this one, I think. Ones are going to look like they stand out from across the table. So just a little bit of water into my paint. I remember I'm using US Field Drab for this. And let's go ahead, just pick out a few high points on his uniform. Now as well, if you've uh, gone anywhere that you've accidentally touched up with skin or, you know, something like that, you can quickly give it a highlight with this and uh, hide those sins. And to highlight his webbing, I'm just going to quickly touch the corners with some stone gray. This is another Vallejo paint here. And this will be quite sharp as it goes on. So, brave heart, because it will dry down to a slightly more respectable finish. Now that highlights quite sharp, but once it's on the table, you can see that it's much better. You know, what we're looking for is an impression with this guy. You could go in and blacken most of his uh, webbing with this stuff, the stone gray, make it look a lot lighter. That would give it more that sort of sun bleached appearance. But on the table, this is going to look pretty cool. Now I'm going to use Russian uniform just to touch up his uh, helmet. 
and the corners of his canteen. We come around to that. And we'll go for a quick few dots of kid's lab flesh just to highlight his nose, his chin, and we'll do his ears. And with that done, the last few details is just a touch on the corners of his metal parts with a little bit of lead belcher. Now you can use any old metallic you like for this, but I like this dull sort of gunmetal look to it. And I'm not going to do much of this, just enough to make it look like it's catching the edges of that blackened steel. And there we have it, that's our English Trooper pretty much complete. All he needs now is his base finished and he'll be ready to hit the table. Now these highlights on his webbing, they are quite extreme, but like I've said, if you put them down on the table and you can still see them, you know, that's more what I'm going for with this. This is a little bit more stylish. Um, if I was going to do, you know, probably a little bit more tidy, I would mix in some of the stone gray to the uh, green gray to make a highlight color a little bit closer to it. And that would be a bit smoother in transition. But as far as getting a bunch of guys on the table, he's looking pretty smart. He's ready for his base and he'll be ready to rock and roll shortly. So I'm going to base him up, get a picture of him so you guys can see what's going on. And that's the core of it. So if you have any questions, guys, as ever, just drop them into the comments. You can get in touch with me on Twitter or Facebook. And as ever, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.